Before the automobile, family transportation was relegated to horse-drawn buggies and carriages. They were necessary and therefore much in demand. Once a slave, Charles Richard Patterson, made a name for himself as a carriage maker. Charles Patterson was born a slave on a Virginia plantation in 1833. Just before the Civil War in 1861, he escaped and headed to Greenville, Ohio. He brought his skills as a blacksmith with him and was hired at the J.P. Lowe Carriage Factory. A smart and excellent worker, Patterson was promoted to foreman and became a partner in 1873. Over the next 20 years, Patterson and Lowe developed the highly successful carriage building business. In 1893, Patterson bought out Lowe's interests and renamed the company C.R. Patterson and Son because his son Samuel was part of the business. C.R. Patterson and Son Company was very prosperous, building 28 types of horse-drawn vehicles, and they employed 10 to 15 workers. Frederick, the eldest son, was more focused on education. He was the first Black American to graduate from the local Greenfield High School, and he attended Ohio State University. He was the first Black American to play on their football team. When news arrived that his brother Sam was very sick, Fred, who was teaching in Kentucky, returned to Ohio in 1897. He worked alongside his father until Charles Patterson died in 1910. Frederick, astutely observed that he saw the future was the automobile, watching the decline of horse-drawn carriages. He said, in 1902, there was one car to 65,000 people, and by 1909, there was one vehicle to every 800 people. And with those kinds of figures, I believe it's time for us to build a Patterson horseless carriage. Frederick took the reins in hand and initiated the conversion from a carriage business into an automobile manufacturer. Therefore, C.R. Patterson and Sons was the only motor vehicle manufacturer in the world owned by a black family. They became a major employer in Greenfield. The Patterson Greenfield Automobile Company began designing cars at the turn of the century and rolled out the first car in September 1915, according to the advertisements they announced, made in two models, a four-door Broadster and a two-door touring car. Featuring a 30-horsepower Continental four-cylinder engine, a full-floating rear axle, electric starting and lighting, and a split windshield for ventilation. The first Patterson Greenfield car sold for $850. It's uncertain how many cars were built, some say as few as 30, and others as many as 150 cars. Some contemporary observers have claimed that the Patterson car was more sophisticated than the Ford Model T. But the small Patterson firm could never compete with the better funded and manufacturing capacity of Ford Motor Company. 
Haddison primarily sold his cars to local and regional customers. They may have built cars until 1919. This picture shows Frederick Patterson standing next to a six-cylinder light truck chassis, which may indicate the firm built a limited number of trucks in addition to automobiles. Automobiles changed transportation. Though it went from a rich man's mode of travel to mass production, and availability to the middle class, a small automobile company like Patterson Greenfield had to look elsewhere for income. Since they understood the technology of early vehicles, they provided auto repair services. But Patterson was all about manufacturing, and Frederick created the Greenfield Bus Body Company, switching the factory focus to building trucks and school bus frames. They also built utility bodies for major auto companies, including Ford and General Motors. The Greenfield Bus Body Company's primary product was school bus bodies, as Midwestern school districts began to convert from horse-drawn to internal combustion fire transportation by 1920. Clients included school boards in Southern Ohio, West Virginia, and Kentucky. The Ohio Transit Company purchased bus bodies used in Cincinnati and Cleveland. During 1922-23, the Greenfield Bus Body Company's yearly output was believed to be 500 bodies of all types, with a monthly payroll of $5,000 and annual sales of $150,000. The company enjoyed steady growth for years. Frederick Douglas Patterson died in 1932. The company was hit hard by the Great Depression, and his sons were unable to maintain the business in Greenfield. In 1938, they moved to Gala, Ohio, and reorganized under the name Gala Body Company, but they closed in 1939. 